Yo, um, we've been having fun the last couple episodes. We're getting um, into it, man. As the season start going along, look, I like I like the direction of this season. Yeah, I think it's this fun. format is I think this format is actually going to rock it out. Look, and shout out to all the young boys that be listening. I appreciate y'all. Look, I'm holding it down for us. These old niggas, they don't want to help us out, man. Man, all we do is help <laughs> the young men out. See, this, this is the thing. You can't say that about when it comes to older black men. Okay, we always look out for the young boys. Like mm. we all like we tell young boys. You're like, hey man, this is how you need to be with your wife. This is how you need to be as a father. Yeah, these are the mistakes I made. At least my generation does. Yeah, y'all getting better. The generation before us, you know, not they so was much, harsh. Not so much. They was harsh. So yeah, I mean, every generation though. I mean, that's you know, everybody has to have the permission to become better, or to do better. I was um laughing because so you was at the baby shower this weekend and um yeah, it was lit. Yeah, <laughs> lit baby shower. Look. My um to give everybody a heads up, we had a game. One of the baby games was uh we filled bottles up with liquor and some type of mixes, and the first person to guess what it was won a bottle of liquor. That's the type of games we did. But in that, um, my brother in law brought his girlfriend to the to the shower, and that was her first time meeting the family and everything. And so everything was cool. She was a nice girl, whatever, whatever. At the end, my wife goes, "Oh, I want to take family pictures." So he told his girl to come hop in a picture. And so when we got home, I was like, yo, I got to talk to your brother. She was like, wow. I was like, yo, you can't add a girl who you just met to the family pictures. And I realized I'm like, <laughs> I sound like the old head that be reaching back out to the young boy. Because he like early, early 20, like barely 21. And I was yeah, like. So, so that girlfriend may not make it. She's not going to make it. Let's, just, let's keep it 100. <laughs> let's keep it 100. I mean, you got an outside shot. I remember when I was younger, man, I was talking to some girl and I was like, green three pointer shot. Yeah. (laughs) He like 27%. Look, I was young. I was talking to my pops and I was like stressed out, quote unquote, over this chick. And my dad was like, yo, call, call these three numbers. I'm like, who are these people? He's like, oh, it's my, my boys, my friends. And all these guys were from church. Cause if you know anything, we, I grew up in church. Right. So I call these mic. Look, call these men, me and my dad was like, ask them, do they still talk to the same girl they was talking to when they when they was your age? Ask all of them, all of them laugh my ass off the phone. Yeah, yeah. They was like, bruh, don't worry about this girl. Nah, don't, don't worry about it's it. never going to happen. Um, Yo, I want to welcome everybody back to the Stir Fry Podcast. Please do me a favor. I need you to hop on Facebook, hop on YouTube, subscribe. Okay. Subscribe to YouTube. The YouTube is actually way better, man, because you can play it in the background. While yeah, you the while you working. Yeah. And I like it, see man. How, see our beautiful faces. Absolutely. You get to see Mike's faces when I say something wild, and he get to look <laughs> at me like, stop. Um, things of that nature. However, before we even get started, um, excuse me, I had a business meeting on Sunday, right? Yep. I'm out with this young lady. Shout out to Chanel. Um, and so, at my, let me play like this, at my uh, baby shower, I point out to like these four girls and I point the mic out. I'm like, yo, all these shorties make money. And Mike goes, really? And they all entrepreneurs. And we're going to talk about entrepreneurs later, right? Yeah. But um, anyway. they, were, they, were, they were very attractive too. Yeah. All of them was good looking. In case y'all watching. <laughs> In case y'all watching. Shout out, you know, shout out to Nisha, Kelly, C, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to all y'all. So anyway, we're having all these conversations, right? So I'm like, um, Sunday I go to brunch with one of the girls who didn't come and she was upset that she wasn't there. And shout out to Chanel because she makes money too. So me and Chanel talking about shit. And um, so in the midst of all this, I'm asking Chanel, I'm like, why are you single? Mm. And her response is, I'm an alpha female and, you know, I'm looking for the right guy. (laughs) So mind y'all, me and Chanel didn't have a craft of a, we didn't have a craft of mimosas, right? Cool. Then we go to the bar and we have two green tea shots. Sub out to Jameson for tequila. Chanel's the one who's making it. She's telling the bartender what we drinking yeah. at this point. So I'm like, all right, bet, whatever. And in this conversation, um, she's telling me this. So I just post the question, do alpha females want beta males? I forget about this shit until the next morning. Until I see my DMs is flooded because as soon as I got home that night, I just went to sleep. Yeah. And I woke up the next morning and I'm looking. I'm like, I got 30 DMs. Where the hell did all this shit come from? <laughs> and all these girls was ringing my ass because I put in there. I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, this is a joke, right? Like, I'm like, because the overwhelming thing was what? Alpha females do not do want not, ba- they beta They do not males. want beta males. But here's the thing. So Here we if, go. If you... <laughs> If you if you are 
All right, let's let's just go back. Let's just go to basic physics, right? Mm. You take the positive positive side of a magnet and the positive side of a magnet. You push them together, they repel one another. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't. You, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work. <laughs> and the thing is with with the quote unquote alpha, and you guys would notice, I rarely use alpha and beta on this show because it's it's just trigger words now, right? No Absolutely. one no one cares about what nah. the fuck it means anymore. Absolutely. So, but since since you posted the question, we'll talk about it. All right. The positive and the positive are always going to repel one another. Absolutely. You're going to have to be. You're gonna have to be feminine. And, and here's and here's the thing. And I, look, I'm not I'm not even here to to even go against the grain. Okay. But feminine feminine women are never told no. Right? Mm. And that's the thing that 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 I always I always laugh when I watch because I got a lot of homegirls. Absolutely, and and I always laugh at them because they they're always frustrated mm. because they want basically they want to be they want an alpha man, but they want to tell him what to do. Yeah, all right. So here's the thing: if an alpha man is controlling everything, like not not controlling as in he's controlling you know what you eat, what where you, you go, eat, and no, shit. like he just he's handling all his business. Yeah, right. There's no place for you to help. Absolutely. If you're asking that man to listen to you and do what you say, what are you asking him? To do or listen to, if he handles everything. If he handles everything, what what is it that you're asking him to do? So, <laughs> so if you want to be heard, that's different. Absolutely, that, that's a conversation, right? All right, you know, are we having dialogue? Are we having conversations? Absolutely, that's way different than a man that's handling business and you're saying, you know, have you ever thought about doing it this way? And then when he say, no, you know, no, I don't do it that way because of X, Y, Z. Which most of the time he's just gonna say no and keep yeah. it moving, right? Absolutely. But let's say he's actually emotionally intelligent and says, nah, "No, I'm not gonna way. do it because of X, Y, Z." And then you push back. I, it's a, I have a really good friend. No matter what I send her, mm-hmm. no matter what I suggest, mm-hmm. even if she asks, yeah, she's instantly gonna go in the opposite direction. Absolutely. So whenever she asks me questions, you know what I tell her? I tell her to do what she want to do. Absolutely. And it's then, and then, what you want to do? And then Never when mind. she gets frustrated at me not answering. Then she listens. Yeah. You know what I'm absolutely. saying? Then she'll come around and be like, you know, okay, you know, let me pay attention to what you're saying. <laughs> but like, but if I but the moment she starts that conversation, if I if I just drop my advice in there, she's gonna instantly disagree. Be, for no reason. For no reason. <laughs> because she has to. Um, quick before I go back to it, um, I had sent a client something, right? Exactly what they asked for. This is when I thought I wanted to be a graphic designer. Send bro what I wanted. Bro came back to me and asked me, could you move the comma over on the flyer? Um, can you move it over? I said, it's no space. He said, well, can you move it closer? Do it to him. Send it right back to him. He's like, perfect. So I'm talking to my sister who know who sent me the client. I'm like, yo, she was like, oh yeah, yeah. Some people hate feeling like they were told to accept something. So even if they really, really like it, they got to go in the opposite direction. They yeah. got to complain, whatever. So let me tell y'all what I found out by having this question up on my Instagram. By the way, for those who do not understand, I have 15,000 Instagram followers. So a lot of people saw it, even though Instagram hides my shit for most people. A couple hundred people saw this shit. So a lot of reactions I got was um, a couple of things I noticed. First thing off the bat, um, there's a negative label on what a beta male is. Yeah, that is um, true. A lot of women, and uh, uh, there's a stigma, not even women, so I don't want to put that out there, but it's a stigma that beta men... It's off, ignorant, um, just weak men. Yeah, they, they're weak. You and know, that, that's, that's not the that's, case. That's the perception. And here's another thing about men is that men, two things men are always aware of. Men are always aware that there is a hierarchy. Mm-hmm. And men are always aware of where they are in the hierarchy. Absolutely. Like, like, it, men, like when Absolutely. A man, when a man walks into the room, he knows if he makes the most money there yeah. or if he makes the least money there. Absolutely. So he... A man doesn't have to ever struggle with the ideal of competition. Absolutely. We went to the court. I went and shot ball for the first time. Like, I don't know when. And it was outdoors. And Trash, there was terrible. a dude There was a dude out there half my age, man. Like, he was giving me the business. See? I ain't going to lie. I was rusty as hell. <laughs> he was giving me the business, man. And, 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 and you know, he started talking or whatever. Yeah. And I'm talking back to him. But, you know, I remind him, bro, you're half my age. Yeah, right? absolutely. You're supposed to be giving me the business. Why yeah. are you talking? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like... But that's that's just that's the competition, right? I know 
I can't stop this 24 year old yeah, dude. It's not happening. It's, it's, it's not happening. And he knows he's supposed to get by me. So when I Every still, time. so the one steal I get or the one bucket I get is worse than the last three or four buckets he's Absolutely. got. Because as men, we're constantly aware that okay. we're in the competition and where we are. And so the other thing I started noticing, just to give y'all a heads up, um, a lot of women perceive themselves as alpha females and y'all really just fucking adults. I'm going to just keep it a buck. Um, <laughs> True. A I, lot of us are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Look, if you pay your rent, you don't depend on a man for nothing, and you got a job, you got a car, blah, blah, blah. Does this not make you automatically alpha female? No. Sorry to keep your heads yeah, up. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of people get confused that, you know, the whole, like I said, we, we, we've we termed this beta into into such a bad thing. There's a lot of prominent men that, that people love that are that are beta Absolutely. males. We're gonna we don't call no names out because I don't even feel like that shit's yeah. going viral. Nah, nah. <laughs> but, and but and we talked about it before. We've talked about yeah. it plenty of times. Yeah. And I laughed because um and I told one one young lady, I said, I don't know why y'all don't want beta males. You get to be exactly who you want. And I said, and your man is gonna just do what you tell him to do, and it's cool. Because to him, it's not worth it, or he's like, cool. I get yeah, to still be, I still get to be the man I want to be. Exactly. I, I get to be who I am. Like, it, look, if you have a woman that's out here crushing it, mm -hmm. you know, and bruh, like celebrate that. Yeah. Worship absolutely. it. Enjoy it. I always, I always ask women that, you know, that they want these alpha men mm -hmm. or they want to be in charge and they still want these alpha men. I'm like, why? Yeah. Like, why, why, why do you want that? Like, why, why wouldn't you want to choose a man that agrees with you? Yeah. And can do the things that, that, that you want. Like, why would you want to date somebody that you're going to be combative with? I know, I know in, in, you know, among black men, you know, we, we have this thing now we're looking for none combative women, mm -hmm. but women also have to look for none combative men. Absolutely. You know, like, why would you want to debate with someone over what needs to be done? Yeah. It's stupid as shit. Enjoy your life. Look, let me tell y'all something. If your man is a manager, and he's a beta male. Let me tell you y'all what y'all going to do. You're going to date that man. You're going to tell his ass, yo, you're actually talented, qualified, and you're good enough to be the CEO. You should go do this, this, and that. He's going to go do that. But and we can sit yeah, at home and, 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 and do it. And we've talked about this. We've talked about, you know, guys that we know that we know that date amazing women mm -hmm. that have that have made them elevate who they are. Absolutely. You know, and that's is nothing wrong with that. You know, if, Absolutely. You, if you meet a woman and you're like, yo, I'm out, I'm outside of my weight class, right? Yeah. You know, like boxing terminology. Mm -hmm. And and this is something that that I've I've seen that a lot of women are bad at. If a man is punching outside of his weight class, mm -hmm. if he's a lightweight, about to take down a heavyweight, yeah. He he's gonna step it up. Yeah. He he's <laughs> gonna be like, yo, I can't afford to lose this one. Absolutely. Woman. The one the men who we talk about aren't the the quote unquote beta males. Yeah. The men that we talk about are the men who never elevate themselves. Like, bro, you really gonna lose that woman because you're not gonna step up and become the type man she want. Those are the men that we talk trash on. Absolutely. But the fellas that go out here and, and, and meet a woman that's crushing it and be like, yo, I gotta elevate to her level, man, we we applaud those men. Absolutely. So I was just laughing at all that. And oh oh also a bunch of y'all alpha females is single because y'all don't like beta males. That was the last thing I recognized as well. Well they single because they're mean as fuck. <laughs> like that's why they're single. Like you can't be mean and, and and gets and have someone to date. Like even the good book says, he who wants a friend, he or she who wants a friend must first show themselves to be friendly. Look. If you're not nice, you cannot expect people to come in and say, All right, you know, I'm gonna just sit here and let you be mean to me. Everybody's not a masochist. No. Hardly anybody is a masochist. Nah. Emotional mask is for sure. Oh gosh. Like come on. It's funny enough. Um Chanel, I still love you. When you see this clip, we can still continue to do business. <laughs> and Chanel's mad cool. She was just a homie. And then she got mad. She's like, take this shit down. Cause she was looking crazy in one of the pictures I was using, man. But shout out to everybody with that. Um, before we get started, man, the baby, the baby, the baby. <laughs> Um, oh man! Over the last week since we last recorded, he lost what seven seven festivals. festivals. Half of these festivals I ain't never heard of. I haven't either. But I mean, they I'm, paying they paying bank though. They got to pay that going rate. I mean, yeah. how much you think the baby costs right now per show? Hundred k? No, festivals. He probably getting like a meal. People don't get hundred k no more, bro. Damn. Yeah, bro. That that is done. Jeez. That is done. <laughs> He's definitely probably getting like close to a meal. He probably getting like a quarter million. I won't say. I won't say. A nah, bro. Maybe at the merchandise sales. Nah, bro. Because you think with rappers, 
You got Drake, Lil Baby, Meg Thee Stallion, and Dub Baby. Those that's the hierarchy right now. Yeah. And so, you know, Drake ain't coming out for at least a couple meal. No well, concert. Drake probably come out for a meal. Probably let me cool, let man. me look up his going Drake, rate. Drake probably come out for a and meal. The, the baby is probably about a quarter meal. I mean, we ain't counting the brother pocket. We just trying to Bru- say you lose seven shows in a week. You you lost a couple million. You, you, yeah, yeah, for you, sure. Yeah, you've lost and, over a million um, for sure. The thing that I'm laughing at with the baby is, let me put it like this: J Cole made a he made comments about how he don't come out for nothing under a meal. <laughs> so, yeah. and I'm telling you, the baby can fill up a uh, arena quicker than J Cole. Now. Sure. J. Cole, I've seen J. Cole perform at the Fillmore, which only holds 2,000 people. Yeah. But them tickets be high as shit. They yeah. ain't the $50 tickets, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, for those who not know, the baby has been released from at least seven festivals. Some of these festivals I ain't never heard of. Some of these festivals I am set on believing that he, that some of these people might just be adding him to shows just so they can say they canceled him. Because I ain't never heard of half of these shits. Yeah, well, it's I mean, fucking well, I saw funny. one of them, like, even in the UK where it was canceled. And, yeah, you know, so again, what the baby said, look, you're not going to get me upset with the baby and <laughs> over what he said, just, not because it's not offensive, but because I, I think that we are snowflakes when it comes to, you know, like, it, there's a conversation to be had, mm-hmm. right? If, if we disagree with someone, especially when you disagree with someone on the far left versus okay. the far right. On the far right, they just don't listen. On the far left, <laughs> they are also racist and bigots and xenophobic, uh-huh. but at least they do listen on the yeah. left. <laughs> so there's an opportunity here for a conversation. And I, and I did see that like, you know, eight different organizations reached out to the baby to educate him on uh, whatever it is that, that the baby was talking about. But again, the the canceling is, is is bullshit because the baby talks about look, the baby. How many times have the baby said you know that he'll pull he'll pull a nigga dome back? Uh, every song, every song, right? Every right. song, and and no one no <laughs> one's offended at that. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? So this wasn't even in a rap song. This was the comment. This this is after I don't know how many blunts and how much alcohol. Yeah. That he said the comments that he made. Absolutely. And then we want to pretend that this is the worst thing that the baby has said. Maybe it is. Maybe America thinks that that talking about giving head in the parking lot is worse than shooting a black man in his face. Absolutely. Maybe that maybe that is the country we live in. But I'd like to have that conversation. Like I'd like America mm. to tell me that, yes, talking about giving oral sex in the parking lot, forget, forget the gender. Right? I don't I don't care. I don't okay. care. Like, I don't care if you're homosexual or heterosexual. I don't care. But I would like America to be clear that, you know, shooting a black man in the face is not as bad as talking about giving a head in the parking lot. I want America to be clear on that. Well, so let me ask you this. Is it from the standpoint of, okay, I get what you're saying and I agree with it. Um, My only issue with that is the LGBTQ community has made it clear what they will take what they stand for and what they what they, stand what, for. They, what they accept and won't accept, right? And, and, and I've seen I've seen that argument. I actually, I I have friends that have posted it that are mm-hmm. in that community, and I get it. But I always go back to them and remind them that mm-hmm. bef- before they ever had a, a orientation, mm-hmm. they were black. Absolutely. So why do why why is this where you want to place your flag on well, your on, on your on your sexuality versus yeah. this is where you place your flag? on who you actually are, you know, in this country. Yeah. No, my, well, the only thing is, is like, it's, you talking about black gays. When you make that argument, the thing is, they their community is made up of more than uh, just black or brown gays. And the thing is, well, I look at it as like this. I don't like these companies coming out and saying, hey, look, the baby can't perform because it is when we've seen him put his hands on women at yes. shows. We've seen him rap about killing people. Yes. Um, we've heard him, you know, rap about, you know, other things. You yes, know. the baby is why my head is on the swivel at Walmart. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and he was, and to give everybody his up, he was at the white Walmart. Yeah. He was at the one in Huntersville. So, so yeah, I mean, so, and, so everything. But for them, it's dollars. Yes. And, 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 and that, and that is my, that is my point, right? Mm-hmm. Because if all these corporations are, are backing out for, for whatever, for whatever percentage of the population the LGBT community is right. Like whatever mm-hmm. percent, which, which I think it's been estimated between five and 7%. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's 10%, but typically it's between five and 7% of the, 
All right. There's a minority percentage in this country of African Americans that's double that easy. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So so okay, I get it. They, that community have said that you know what? If you talk about us, we're not going to spend our dollars with you. Yeah. All right. Do make it clear what your stance is though. Make it True. clear what your stance is because if you're telling me that shooting black men in the face is less than being offended at what someone says, then, then I absolutely have a problem with you. Absolutely. I absolutely look, and and I don't listen to a ton of rap music. I know um I know Nas dropped today. I haven't yep. listened to that, but I'm listening to it on the way home. Same here. You know, and it's <laughs> like that's the kind of music that I, that I kind of listen to now. So I'll be honest. I really don't listen to these these young guys. Yeah, I he really hates the young guys. I, I wasn't, <laughs> but I mean, but I never was really into like even the gangster rap. Like yeah, you yeah. know, when, when we was growing up, give me Goody Mob and Outkast all day, absolutely over you know the gangster rap of you know Tupac and N.W.A. Yeah, did we listen to those guys? Of course we did. But I was I was bumping AT Aliens way more than I was ever bumping any of that. So I, I've never been that. So true to my word. I don't really want to hear about people getting murdered in, in rap songs. Yeah, it's kind, it's the weirdest thing. For me, I understand that these corporate, I don't agree with it. I want nobody to take that yeah. as a misconception. I don't agree with it, but I understand these companies say, hey, what matters to us is dollars. So if y'all are cool with killing black people or an artist showing up here that, look, the same place where the baby made the comment about uh, he made those type of comments, it was a guy who was on stage with him that is accused of shooting a woman who just performed right before. Which, by the way, now they're saying that by him being on stage, he violated the restraining order that's against him with Tory Lanez. Was she on stage? Nah, but when they were backstage at the same time and he knew that she was going to be there because what? she was the next person. So they're looking into it. Were they 500 feet apart? Or, I don't know. Uh, 100 feet apart? They're looking into it. But for me, what I'm trying to say is if you telling me you cool with... Somebody getting on the the venue knows that Tory Lanez is there. Yeah, they I mean, I mean everybody, and, and that's the thing. It, it is the hypocrisy. And, yeah, and look, and and I get it. I'm not defending what the baby said. Yeah, yeah. But I will defend the baby's right to say it. Right. Yeah. Now, if corporations want to drop the baby, that's also cool. Yeah. But you, but the same way that you get to drop the baby for the comments that he made, mm-hmm. I get to call out your hypocrisy because absolutely the baby t- talks about shooting black men in the face. Absolutely. And if that's okay. Absolutely. But him talking about giving head in the parking lot is not okay. I need you to be clear on what, that, you, stand that, on what you stand for. Cool. All right. Absolutely. That, that's it. That's it. Anybody can say what they want to say. Look, if, as, long, as long as you're not inciting violence against somebody, I'm mm-hmm. for it, man. Like, that's what the, there is no thought without offense. All right. Absolutely. I don't, I don't care if someone offends someone else if someone offends me if someone offends me i i, I like to figure out like damn like what what did i do to you what what did i do to you like what why do you think that so i mean because that's where thought comes from i'd rather i'd rather us put it out in the open than to have men hide behind sheets absolutely throw it out there in the open um and the last thing i say is uh the baby bro you gotta fire your publicist um it, it's better to say nothing's what baby gotta understand is look Usher got accused of having herpes. He still ain't said shit about none of that. It's better to say nothing. Absolutely. Because <laughs> that apology was the weakest apology I've heard. And you have a publicist so that you don't have to write this. And it seems like your publicist wrote this statement and forgot for the last two weeks you've been doubling down. My my biggest issue with the baby, not of what he said, besides, well, let me play like this. What he, I, said, what he said was crap. Right, like, the, like you, you yeah. didn't have to say you didn't you didn't have to go there, especially in an audience of what three hundred thousand people. Yeah, well, my thing is this: you make the HIV comments, which is totally distasteful, and then you apologize for that because I think you realize, like, oh shit, I did just talk about you know a disease that affects hundreds of thousands, millions yeah. of people that they can't help. Yeah, say, and you know, you go out there, but then the other comments you double down, and then the first line of your apology goes: social social media moves so fast. That people want to demolish you before you even have the op- uh, the opportunity to grow, educate, and learn from your mistakes. bro. you can't go for two weeks saying, I'm a real nigga. I said what I said, and I mean what I said. And that's the first line of your apology. Well, I mean, I I think I think he kind of figured that he needed to say something. And, I, and, I, and I, think, I, I think saying that, right, like, you, you should learn from your mistakes. Absolutely. You know, so I do believe that. I believe he was correct there. But that has to be either, either say nothing or that has to be the first comment. That has to be the first comment two weeks ago, though. Yeah, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you, look, 
I learned something, you know, it just it's just life in general is that most of the time when someone says something like don't don't automatically respond. Like never. he, he, he should have never responded. No. Until it, one of the one of the greatest life hacks is type something and then just leave it for five minutes. Yeah, and then come back to then it. Then come back to it. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a text message, an email. Absolutely. You know, a Facebook message. Yeah. Like type what you want, but don't hit send. Just wait. <laughs> Give it five minutes. And then come back, and most of the time you condense that shit way down, or you delete. Are you delete? <laughs> <laughs> That's what that was. Um, next up, man. Funny enough, Canada. Oh, you know what, man? I just I saw I saw that Canada is creating a fund for Uh-oh. black entrepreneurship. Uh, I want to say approximately like three hundred million dollars. Um, now the the irony in this is Canadians only make up three percent. I'm excuse me, black Canadians only make up three percent of Canada's population. Mm. Now. Why is Canada doing this? <laughs> and here we are, 13% of the population, right? Which is small. Which is very small. But we are the heartbeat of this country, right? Like rock and roll music. Yeah. That's black people. Yep. You know, most of the food in this country, you know, it's black mm-hmm. people. You know, culture, you know, mm-hmm. jokes. Yeah. Black people. Yeah. We, we 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 threw away rock and roll. Like we had a good time with it. Then we was like, here y'all go. We gave y'all Jimmy. We gave y'all Little Richard. We gave y'all. Little Richard created it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We gave, you know, well, uh, that was um, Chuck Berry. Okay. Mike. Then we, we gave you Prince. We yeah, like it, then we so, literally said. So so my my point is, if Canada is doing this right mm-hmm. for three percent of their population, you know we got four four and a half times that in mm. America. Uh, at what point, America, are you going to at least pretend? That you're gonna do something for not only the people that have given you the heartbeat of this country, but let's not forget we were going sh- straight head full on into a dictatorship, one hundred percent. No one knew who to vote for, right? Like motherfuckers out here trying to vote for fucking Bernie that was never gonna win a goddamn election. <sighs> they still tight about that, you know? Like I mean, like the the the, so- the South Carolina blacks were like, no, we we need a moderate. White male, no matter his age, Look. to come in and save <laughs> this fucking country. And then we went into the poll booths in Wayne County, Detroit, in Philly, in Fulton County, mm. in Atlanta. We went into all these major places that it took to win the Electoral College yeah. in these states because evidently there's a part of the population that's just overwhelmingly racist and wanted a fucking dictator. No way. All right. No way. And so if we do all of this for this fucking country, at what point do we get it? Do we get anything back? It won't. It, right. it sucks to say. Um, let me read something to y'all. To point that out. Um, it includes the reparations includes ten thousand to common experience uh, payments to approximately ninety thousand living students, um, three thousand for every year the students attended. Um, this is for residential schools. Excuse me. Um, nearly two hundred million in funding for healing and educational programs, and the option of pursuing individual claims of abuse through the courts. Um, and if you're sixty five and older, you can get a payment. <laughs> you can apply for a payment of at least eight thousand dollars. So, what's interesting about all this is because I think last season we talked about what could reparations look like in this country. Yeah. And now, mind you, this is the country that that blacks were running to. Yeah, this is why blacks ran to be free. Yeah, or <laughs> brought. It Jeez. Was. And so it's just funny to see like all this. You know, I've been to Canada, man. It's cool up there. If it wasn't so cold, it's man. too cold, man. It's too bro, cold. It's real. That's cold why. That's why the population is three percent, bro. I was shocked it was that high. Yeah, <laughs> bro. It's cold up there, man. Um, super interesting, man. I'm I'm interested to see how that happens. I mean, how this continues. I'm interested to, grow. to see what the hell we could do in this country. For the people who just saved this country. Well, it, so I'm, I'm not trying to go back, but last last night um, on the photography podcast, I was talking to Key and I said, you know, we were talking about how um, the LGBT, we were talking about the baby and we were talking about how um, that community requires certain things and we don't. And me and her were going back and forth like, do blacks require or demand any changes? And she was saying we do. I'm like, I don't really see it. And I was like, look, I said, I don't know nobody know if anybody remembers. We do have a president. Like we have Joe, we, Joe that, got that, in office. Not only do we have a president, we have a president that owe us. Did, owe us and specifically. I, told her, I said, yo, Stacey Abrams is the real reason why Joe is in office, right? Yeah. 
He hasn't given black people shit since he got in office. He hasn't. I I don't even remember what bro voice sounds. Bro, like. can 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 we can we get you know you know what? No more no not warrants, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, we're gonna have a national database of cops that can they get fired? That is is basically amounts to dishonorable discharge, mm-hmm. so they can never work for you know any other government you know Absolutely. job. Like this is basic stuff. Nobody asking for a check. We ask yeah. you. We ask you to fucking do better. Yeah, and the fact and the fact that we have nothing, mm-hmm. and the fact that a country that blacks ran to to be free, <laughs> where we only make up three percent of the population, it's like, you know what? Yeah, we did kind of screw y'all over too. Yeah, like I mean, come. It's, it's this country has to do better. Absolutely, it has to do better. But to your point of what the LG of uh, BQT community, what what they do they expect more? I, they're they're in positions of power. Mm-hmm. You know they they yeah. own, they own their own businesses. Yeah, they own a lot of the the entertainment and mm-hmm. the music mm-hmm. that we have. So they get to, so their voices get to be heard. Mm-hmm. For for whatever reason in this country, it is hard for people for African color. Americans or people of color absolutely to own anything. Like the moment you yeah. own it, it's almost instantly attacked, destroyed, or discredited. Absolutely. As blacks, we are we we're, we're suspicious of ourselves. Oh my gosh! You know of, yep. of supporting one another. Mm-hmm. This, I mean, which is the reason why you know we basically, as a black man podcast, try to really discuss on what it's going to take to own our own businesses and to own things because that's the only way you're ever going to be heard. Right? Absolutely. Like if if you can if you have a country that was pretty much one hundred percent. Saying that you know what we're we're okay with a dictatorship mm-hmm. and ignoring the constitution and electing you know a, a idiot president forever Absolutely. Absolutely. for no other reason than besides the fact that he's a bigot. Yeah, if you have over half of the country that thinks that's okay, or nearly half the country that thinks that's okay, mm-hmm. and and as a race of people, you run into that burning building. Yeah, you grab that country, you pick it up, you throw it in a blanket, you put it over your arm, yeah. and you run it outside of that burning building. And when you get outside of that burning building, that that building that is on fire, and you put that person down, and they don't even say thank you, it's tough. It's a slap in the face. It's a slap in the face, and that's where we are with this country right now. Absolutely. Um, sad, sad, sad news to hear. Um, and we're gonna dive into this. Dr. Dre's oldest daughter. Says she is sleeping in a car. Um, and her dad won't help. Um, let me just read. She says, I've been working in a warehouse and doing Uber Eats and DoorDash. Um, she's a single mama of four. My kids are staying with her friends, they're not living with me in the car. It's just me. Um, she just moved from Nevada to California where there's higher wages. She said, I'm taking odd jobs just for now. Um, I make 15 an hour. And I think everybody's looking and saying, "Well, where's your dad?" Well, so what's your what's your thoughts on all of this? Okay, so several things. You know, when it rains, it pours. You know, yeah. look, <laughs> be aware of dad in life, right? Like you deal with one thing, and then something else comes up. Uh, I mean, I read a little bit on the backstory of it. It looked like he was, I guess, he was taking care of her or paying her rent, absolutely, up until like you know, twenty twenty, absolutely. And then she went and said something, I guess, to the media, mm-hmm. uh, and then he cut her off, which. I sort of understand. I mean, because she's a grown, she's grown. Now. Like she, she's not, she's not a kid. Um, so several things, several things here, and this, this is what, this is what I like about the story, is right? Because it kind of hits on everything we talk about. Um, one, you know, being a king and being able to take care of everybody, you know, that's that's mm-hmm. around, right? Like Dre is taking care of his ex wife now, mm-hmm. whatever new woman he's dating. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, all the kids that are listening to him. And evidently a kid that wasn't listening to him. Yeah. All right? Who he hasn't seen in 18 years. Ha- that he way. hasn't seen in 18 years that he doesn't have a relationship with. But it goes back to the first thing that we that we came on the season was. Stop having kids with women that you're not going to marry. Absolutely. All right. Because that fixes this problem. Right. The original the original place mm-hmm. to fix this problem was whenever she was, you know, before she was ever born, when he was dating whoever her mom is. Absolutely. By not having a child with that woman. Mm. All right. Strapping up. Not having sex with her, close and near to her ovulation cycle, and you know, just not getting her pregnant. Now, since yeah. he did, uh, that's Dre's responsibility. Absolutely. That's and, and and Dre doesn't get away from that responsibility, unfortunately, because she's an adult. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it, it, it does it suck? Yeah, it sucks. Is he trying to teach her a lesson? I'm sure. Uh, but 
Dre, that's your child. Yeah. And you are always going to have that that parental feeling for your child. Now, is he teaching her a lesson right now? I don't know. I'm not Dre. I'm not in his family. Absolutely. But I, I don't I don't think that there's anything wrong with, you know, trying to make an adult grow up. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I fear for her. I hate it for her. But, mm-hmm. I mean, you can't tell me as Dr. Dre's um, daughter, you didn't have opportunities. No. You, you cannot tell me that at some point that relationship was good enough for your father to say, hey, do you want to come and intern here at this label? Absolutely. Do you want to go to this school and, and pick up, you know, cinema, you know, yeah, whatever it is that you want to do? I, I believe that, you know, in that comfort, you know, she got lazy. Yeah, absolutely. She got lazy. And the fact that she has four kids and it, it never said she was married. No, it doesn't say. So, so the question that I have is, where where are those children's father or fathers? Mm. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, why do, why are the kids staying with friends? Why aren't the kids staying with their dads? Why you can't stay with a friend? Yeah, why can't you stay with a friend? Why aren't you staying with their dads? Like, this, I, look, I'm huge on this. If you have more than one baby daddy, or if you have more than one baby mama, mm-hmm. you need to take your ass home to one of them. Yeah. <laughs> get 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 out of this dating pool. <laughs> if you got two or three baby mamas, don't be out here trying to date these single women. You got three women to choose from, bro. Take your butt home to one of those three women and settle down. Yeah. It's it's for me, it's um I would love to know more. Your dad doesn't get to a billion and you sleeping in a car, um, doing having three jobs. Uh, to me, it don't make sense. It doesn't. It, 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 there, there's definitely more to the, to the story. story that she's letting out because here's yeah. my thing: you haven't seen your dad since um, you haven't seen your dad since you were, if I'm doing the math, 28, right? How old is she now? She's 38. So she's 38. Well, 18 so years. she ain't seen his, she, so, since, since, since she, she was 20. Since she was 30. Excuse me. Well, no, yeah, 20. 20 excuse 20. me. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. So yeah, you haven't yeah. seen your dad since you was 20, and um, for 18 since then, in the last two years. You just had to figure this shit out. Well, I mean, and that's the thing. If he was still taking care of you, you know, like th- it is at thirty six, he was still paying your rent and giving you an allowance, according to her. Yeah, and and and, and again, the problem is, why do you have four children and yes. you're not married? Yeah, like we have to start taking some sort of accountability in this country of when we're making mistakes. You should not, if you are not married, you should not have four children. You shouldn't be having four kids. You shouldn't be having four kids. Look, I get, I get the first kid. Yeah. Right? But after the first kid, if the the second kid damn sure need to be with the second person, yeah, with the same person, right? With the same person, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> if you're gonna you have a second kid out of wedlock, it should definitely be like you should not have two kids with two <laughs> different women out of wedlock. Yeah, it don't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And we talked about last week about how much it costs to have kids out of wedlock. Too much. It costs too much. It costs you it's, to it's basically a mil and a half. Yeah. Per child. Yeah. Is what it's gonna cost you over an eighteen year period, right? That's that. That's no compound interest. That's not investing in a startup. That's not investing in Bitcoin or mm-hmm. forex or whatever the hell bullshit y'all on right now, <laughs> right? So, so that's not investing in any of those things. A mill and a half to have a child out of wedlock, like she has four. So she's six million dollars in the hole, or or that guy is six million dollars in the hole, or those guys are several million dollars in the hole. Whatever it is. At some point, she has to have some kind of accountability of where her life is. And mm-hmm. if you don't have any accountability, then you need to do what you got to do when you go to church, right? You, you need to have some repentance. Something. <laughs> you need to come back to the altar. You got to come to the altar of Dre with some repentance and be like, Dad, I messed up. Look, and I, my thing is. <laughs> I'm coming home. Why are you telling people this? I'm coming home. I'm, <laughs> come. I'm also, that's my other thing. Like, why is it necessary to tell us, you doing interviews and I can't find my dad. Well, like he dad. already cut you off for that in the first place. He cut you off a year and a half ago. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this man. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he dealing with all that other shit. And it's like, yo, I haven't been with your, I, I was not with your mom after you was five. You know what I'm saying? I paid for you well until you was 36, paying for your livelihood. Like, it is what it is. And, and you're going to do yeah, interviews. And, 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 and I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not even saying that he shouldn't, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that he should or shouldn't. Yeah. Um, I, I would have, you know, I would say personally, I'd probably have a hard time, you know, cutting the child off if I got, you know, millions upon millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. But I also don't know what he's dealt with, right? Because yeah. for, for him, if that's an easy decision, then there's no telling what he's dealt with. Yeah, to absolutely. Just, to just say, you know what? Nah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> um, what ain't good is this wage parity that's going on in the U.S. Yeah, so I mean, it, what's up, man? So it goes back to the conversation that we that we've been having regarding 
Well, let, let's jump back to your your conversation that you had on your page with do uh, do alpha women want beta males? Mm-hmm. And it goes back to another conversation on your podcast when you mm-hmm. when you was asking, do women want to be with men that make what forty two thousand a year? Yeah. Do right. women do uh, black women want average men, and the average wage was forty two forty two thousand dollars a year. And, and so, so here is the thing: is that uh, we're finding that women don't want that. Absolutely. Right? Or if you want to say that it's not women, if you just want to say you know no one wants to marry anybody, um, the thing is, for the amount of money, the the, the wage gap that's that's between black men and black women. Mm-hmm. Um, black women make 63 cents on a dollar compared to white men, which is bullshit. But black men are not far above that. It's 69.7 cents per dollar for, you know, white men. All right. And this is from, um, I want to say epi.org mm-hmm. where, where we was looking at this. And this call, this comes into, I guess the, it comes into what's, what's going on in our community right now of why men and women aren't being married. And, and, and it has something to do with, I mean, as much as we might hate, you know, our sassy brother, <laughs> hypergamy could really be a thing. Like this mm. ideal of not being married because there is not any wage parity, right? So if if we're both under 70 cents on the dollar compared to what white men make, mm-hmm. then as and Asian. And and well, Asian men makes even more than white men. They do. <laughs> so they which make is crazy. Right. Yeah, I, I think I think Asian men make about fifteen percent more yeah. than than white men. But there's a lot of reason for that, right? Like they're not talking about every, every Asian in the world. Yeah. They're talking about the Asians that are, you know, that are allowed to immigrate yeah. from China, Japan into America. So, mm-hmm. you know, there, there is a difference there, but one of the things that, that I did read um, that, I, that I found interesting is that, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna say this real quick. When uh Hispanic women decide to speak up about their wage gap, it's going to be tough for black women out here. Well, and, and, and here's the thing. It's going to be tough. So so it so it go it goes back to to two different conversations that that we're that we're trying to have. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, one black men should not be having kids out of wedlock. Absolutely. Black men should only be having babies with women that they're married to. The reason why I decided to go into this is because I read an old article on it was called Inheritance um of Black Poverty and it's yeah. all about the men. It's an mm-hmm. article from 2018 mm-hmm. which basically was saying that black women do have tremendous upward mobility compared to where they've came from. Mm -hmm. But despite that upward more um, mobility, there's more black children born in poverty today Mm. than, than, than they were in the sixties. And the only way out of that, and and I'm paraphrasing this Mm -hmm. article very, very briefly (laughs) is the men do have to find ways to create a wage parity. Mm. Now there's two problems with that, right? Here we go. So if (laughs) to, to create a wage parity, that means that, Either, either you're knowingly being sexist, which means I'm gonna pay black men yeah. more than I pay pay black women. Absolutely, which you know you can't do that would yeah. be illegal. That would be illegal. <laughs> or black men do need to start opening their own businesses, starting their own side hustles, so they can create this this economic disparity, which is what. Obviously, this is what's needed, right? Yeah. Which means that if a black man creates his own business and he makes one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year, mm-hmm. there's 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 not many jobs that anybody can work on to make that kind of money. Yeah, I know we think people make a ton of money, like yeah, no, not not many people are making one hundred eighty thousand dollars at their job. That is just not happening. They're I don't not. care what field you're in. Maybe if you are in Silicon Valley or yeah. in Manhattan, you making more than that. But for the most part, most people in this country do not make that. On a salary basis or a nine to five basis, maybe with, maybe with overtime in some fields, yeah. sure. But for the most part, that just doesn't happen. We have to create our own industry and our own businesses to create this wage parity. Mm-hmm. So until that happens, it really said that it it doesn't expect the marriage rate to go up mm. because your black men and black women are making the same amount of money. Yeah. But the problem is, is that when children are born in poverty. Mm-hmm. It's all it's damn near impossible for half of those kids to get out of poverty. Yeah. So if a hundred kids are born in poverty, fifty has an opportunity to get out, fifty have no chance. So the only way to, to reduce that gap is to we have to stop having children in poverty. We have to which goes back to our original point is men really should not be having kids out of wedlock. Absolutely. Men not. should not have kids with any woman that they're not married to. 
and men should probably wait till they're about 30 years old before they even think about having kids. Somebody asked me, they said, uh, if you can do everything all over, would you, uh, how, what would you change? And I said, I probably would have waited one more year to get married. <laughs> one more. Now, mind y'all, I got married when I was 30 and it was a great time. I remember when I was younger, I had this bright idea that I was going to get married younger <laughs> because my parents got married so young. And then my dad was like, don't you dare, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was one of them situations. But, um, you know, and my parents are still good. You know, they're still married. They've been married 33 years. You know what I'm saying? Which is a beautiful thing. But sometimes I listen to them and they go, yo, we got married when we was 18 and 20. Like, that shit, you, you're not doing that. No, no, you're not doing it. And, you know, one more point from the article is stated. It's stated that, you know, which, you know, might be another reason why there's not a huge rush for blacks getting married right now. It, it was basically saying that um, when black women get married, that it really doesn't help. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. Yeah, it doesn't help. So so the issue is having the kids in poverty. Yeah. So it ain't even marriage, right? The, yeah. the biggest problem is that we're having children in poverty and they have no shot yeah. at, at getting, getting out, out of, of poverty, poverty because of the wage disparity in this country. Which goes back to our original conversation is this battle of the sexes. Yeah. We got to cut this shit out because we are not one another's enemy. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the system is your enemy. You're both making 30% less, right? I mean, yeah. if, if one person is making 100 and you're making 70 yeah. over a 10 year period, that's a $300,000 difference. Absolutely. Uncompounded. Absolutely. So it's it's interesting, man. Um, Y'all stop having kids, man. Out of, out of wedlock. I Let's mean, that, that, be, that becomes the problem. This is um, Brookings Institute um, that actually has had the study. But, no, I just wanted to dabble in that because, you know, again, this this is a hustlers podcast, and we're here understanding that, you know, we got to make more money because nobody's going to pay you what you're worth. Like, even, even it's like, look, even white men who have jobs aren't being paid what they're worth. Yeah, nobody they get, get paid. Yeah. They can pay more than us, but yeah. if you work for somebody, you're not you're getting not paid getting, what look, you're worth. Nothing was worse than um, I'm at a job. I'm not making no damn money. And I was ta- I was talking to Michael. You probably don't even remember this shit. But I was talking to you about something. You was like, nah, yeah, if you're making this at work, your boss is probably making like 10 times more like off of you. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "What?" And you were like, "Yeah." He, he was like, "Bro, it's nobody that has a job right now that works for anybody that gets paid what they're worth." Nobody. And I tell people all the time, if your boss knew that they can pay you one cent less, and you would take the fucking job, they would pay your ass. They would cent. pay you less. They, they which, no which is which is why African Americans, because post the apartheid, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it ain't like our parents had this great negotiating ability. Yeah. <laughs> when they walked into a factory, they'd be like, "I want the same thing that." That, Absolutely. That, um, I don't. I can't even think of a Chad. Right. Mm-hmm. I want Chad's salary. Right. They knew they couldn't do that. So yeah. so so if they couldn't do that, of course there was going to always be this wage parity between you know African Americans and non people of color. Absolutely. So if you want to try to defeat that, then we definitely got to start creating our own industry and our own hustles and working from there. Absolutely. Um, I gotta give hand claps for this. All right. Hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Because I'm about to do it. I got to. So we're going to redo that. I'm going to show you why. Because something, you know, nothing is more amazing before. Why are you finding that clip, Mike? Um, Nothing is more amazing than where you hear a song, right? And it hit different. That is it. That's and it. We've been laughing. That's <laughs> Let it. Let me tell y'all something. Rihanna's my dream woman, bro. Rihanna. Rihanna, Rihanna, hand claps again. Because if you have no idea, Rihanna is not worth a billion. She's worth 1.7, <laughs> according to Forbes. And what's amazing is. Talk um, about wage parity. Yeah. <laughs> what's amazing is I remember um, hearing rumors about it, whatever. And I remember Kendra Lamar had on his uh, damn album. He was talking about how um, Rihanna was broke, mind you. And he's he's talking about like how Rihanna handled that with class because, you know, people were stealing from her. Um, she wasn't getting paid what she was supposed to. And he was like, yo, it couldn't have been me. I would have ran up in these offices, whatever. And I think it was a known thing because I had heard rumors way before then. They were talking about Rihanna's not worth what people thought. Yeah. Then for Rihanna to pop back out a couple of months later, it was like, oh, she's signing with 
the big company that's way over there, you know, the Hennessy um, brand L- that's over LVH. there. LVH. LVMH. Yeah, they own every fucking thing. Yeah, Give everybody everything. a hiss up. Like, they the, own, the Louis Vuitton company. Yeah, they own that. They own Hennessy. They own H&M. They own Zara. They own yeah. every... If you can buy clothes, they own it. If it's French, it's, they own it's, it. They own it. And so <laughs> she starts with Fenty. And it comes out, oh, she's now worth $600 million, which makes her the highest paid musician. So I go to Mike and I go, yo, how did Beyonce let this happen? And so I forgot what you had told me. You was like, bro, it, it just happens. Like you, And then I thought about it. I said, well, Beyonce was, she didn't dabble into too much other entrepreneur stuff. Right? Well, and, well, and not only that, but, you know, so Beyonce is entertaining. Yeah. Rihanna was sex appeal. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's that fits the L L M V H brand. Like that yeah. fits them, right? Like Louis Vuitton isn't entertaining. Yeah. It's sexy. Like they yeah. don't they don't give a fuck if twenty people buy it. Yeah. Or twenty million. Well, they'll never yeah. sell twenty million pieces. But you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, they're they're more exclusive. And Rihanna was an acquired taste. Absolutely. Similar to Hennessy, right? Absolutely. Right? It, it, she was an acquired taste, whereas Beyonce was she was a taste that everybody enjoyed. And to get him everybody a heads up, Rihanna now is um, the wealthiest female musician in the world, and she's second only to Oprah as the richest female entertainer. Well, who's her boyfriend right now? ASAP motherfucking Rocky. Bruh. And ASAP, let a- me tell you something. ASAP Rocky, at black man to black man. Get her pregnant. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't get her pregnant. Marry her, bro. Marry her. Don't, Absolutely. Don't, he's fucking young boy. God, don't listen. We just talked about just how you not Literally just talked about this. This, and this is why it be happening. Like that shit right there. ASAP though, like real talk, man. Don't hey, don't mess that up, bro. Don't Please cheat don't. On, don't cheat on a man. Like you got a woman that's solid. And you've been you've been kissing her ass for like a year. Yeah, don't and stop we kissing know, her ass. Please don't bro. stop don't because stop kissing her ass. let me tell you something. Black man to black man, ASAP Rocky, if you mess this up, we will be clowning you for one full episode. Oh, we we not even gonna like listen to your music. I think no, no. I think all black men would probably be like, Yeah, we're not listening we to can't, ASAP. We can't take we can't, nobody we can't support serious. you. Hey man, don't screw over Rihanna. Please man. don't. Take care hey, of Rihanna. Please take care of her. And the thing is, um, I say this and I've been saying it. I don't think we ever get another Rihanna album. And if we do, nah. it is the last one. Nah, we we are not getting it. Matter of fact, I don't even think she should make albums more. Like I think she should just do like collaborations. Like, you nah. know, because I mean I'm pretty sure she want to make music from time to time, but <laughs> maybe I'm pretty Probably. sure like making an album, like making an album is a lot of work. Man. It's a lot of work. Yeah. When so. I'm making easier money not yeah, doing shit. Exactly. She's made more money by not doing music. Yeah, exactly. So like, I, I I but I, I think I mean I wanna I wanna hear some Rihanna hits, man. Like, you know. And you um and Drake, leave Rihanna alone, bro. This Please. woman is happy. She got her money. She you, got rich out there. Yeah, your bro. Ass. Like, like, man, like, leave Rihanna alone, man. but make a but make a song with her though. Um, before we go to the next thing, and still on Rihanna, um, hold on, because I, I wanna, I wanna, I want, I bring this up so many times, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's a, uh, um, I think it's an understatement. Double XL, you guys need um to really sit down and uh find that album find that cover where you had jay-z on the front um and jay-z had a whole it's a double xl cover for people who do not understand what i'm talking about and it's of jay-z kanye west lebron james foxy brown was on there i know uh tierra marie was on there jay-z in that article he talks about why rihanna is super important and it's just mind blowing to me, those people that was on that magazine that was included that Jay Z is talking about. Out of the eight people that was a part of that photo shoot, four of them is billionaires, and I think that's just mind blowing to me. Yeah, I mean, what sucks if you wanted to afford it, it didn't. Yeah, but you, <laughs> like like that that's that's the sad part because that, that means that part. means that you had the potential to, and you did nothing with it. Absolutely, and that and that's like that's like the greatest fear, man of. Any entrepreneur, any hustler, it's like, man, we all at the same levels. We all crushing it. Mm-hmm. And then when you see, because here's the thing. When someone takes off, they really don't try to do it by themselves. They really do it after no one supports them. Absolutely. And then they be like, oh, fuck it. I'm, I'm going to go do it myself now. Yeah. So, yeah, it sucks that if you had that sort of access and then it didn't happen for you, like, that would be a reality check for me. Like, that would be like, yo, let me look in the mirror. It's too late now. But 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 here but here's the thing though. It's it's never really too late because if you have that potential, it's still in you. It's you just, somewhere. You just gotta start it. You just gotta get moving with it. Absolutely. Um, 
But to me, that was just, it's just my, I always go back to that article. And the reason why I always go back to that article, because I remember Jay-Z talking about why it was important to have Kanye there. Um, He talks about why it was important to have LeBron there, who was, you know, this magazine came out and shit is too small. Anyway, um, it came out when I was in high school and I just remember having looking at I'm like, why is LeBron there? And Jay-Z talks about, no, I need LeBron to go with me to go talk to Warren Buffett because we got to change the NBA. And I'm starting to look at like how that shit is changing. You know what I'm saying? Having Kanye there to after this, you know, Kanye goes working. He goes and work for Louis Vuitton. He now, you know, because he go work for Nike. Now he's at Adidas and yeah, he's changing I mean, things. And that's the thing is like it is is it's part of learning. You know that skill set. I mean, mm-hmm. when people forget. Hell, I forgot until I, I I recently saw this that um Kim Kardashian was Paris Hilton assistant yeah she was an assistant and who stopped i'm not your assistant no more now i'm your friend to now i'm richer than you yeah you know so (laughs) so, i mean so there's always an opportunity to learn from somebody right like to to get to the point to say all right i'm gonna humble myself enough to to sit at someone's feet and try to understand what's going on because no one does social media better than the kardashians nobody on the planet nobody (laughs) so there there's so much to be said about being humble, and then there's so much to also be said about hustling. Absolutely, like getting out here grinding. Like fuck, fuck that job shit. Do it while you got to do it. Yeah, but but the goal always has to be like, yo, I got to get out here and make this money on my own because I know nobody's gonna pay me what I'm worth. Absolutely, nobody. Um, your video is it on your phone or laptop? Yeah, I got it on the phone. Fuck, I ain't got my cord. All right, you gonna have to hold it up to the mic. All right, so we go. We're gonna listen to this, and this is our segment of. Where go. Kevin was right. Here we go. And where Kevin was wrong. <laughs> Let's see here. And then we'll do simp post of the week, which is it, it's terrible. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. All right, here we go. Let's listen. So, bottom line, pretty privilege exists. True. <laughs> and the thing of it is, ladies, for the women who get upset with the women who have pretty privilege, you can't do anything. You need to overperform in femininity, mm. friendly, fitness. That's what would be best. It would be better for <laughs> you to become fit, feminine, friendly. Because you cannot do, you cannot, you, you're born what you're born with. See, as a man, we understand that. As a man, we understand that. A man who's short doesn't sit back, man, I wish I was tall. A guy who's a shorter guy, he knows what he's, a guy who's, uh, maybe not as smart. Men have to accept our limitations. And this is one of the biggest problems today. And this, everybody. All right. All right. Where you want to start at? Because Two I got po- a whole rant on pretty girl privilege. All right. But that's a whole nother subject. Is pretty girl privilege, privilege a real thing? Absolutely. And I'm going to go ahead and let me take y'all. I'm going to do this shit and don't fucks with me because I'm definitely cutting this clip and making it my own. Um. Pretty girl privilege. Is it a real thing? Yes. As a photographer, all right, Mike knew me when I first started out in photography. All right. I've been doing photography since 2008, and I was super trash, right? Let me tell y'all something. Pretty girl privilege is so real that during the midst of a pandemic, people are losing their jobs. I stayed busy because women needed photos and I was literally getting bookings. And if you don't believe me, I can show you women needed bookings simply because I got a dude out here who I need to scam and I need a photo shoot so I can get my money. Pretty girl privilege is how women go to photographers and they say, hey, I'm going to flirt with you because I need photos thinking that, hey, if I make you think that you can possibly get with me, you might do it for free. Pretty girl privilege is girls. When you tell them no, they get upset and they don't want to speak to you anymore because you're a lame nigga. Pretty girl privilege is super, super real. And I laugh at it because forget the personal level, right? On a professional level, you see it all the times. We all know the girl at work who's super pretty, who goes flirt with the boss when she's 10 minutes late, yeah. right? We know the girl who goes in and twirls her hair so that she can get off early. We yeah. see that shit all the time. We see the girl who goes who doesn't believe in standing in line. They walk to the front of the club line and they go talk to the bouncer. When you out, which let me tell you, all for me, and I'm a young guy, 
When when I'm out with a shorty back in my old days and she could go straight up to the bouncer when there's a line and just be like, hey, give him a hug and let her in. I already knew what that was. I'm like, <laughs> OK, something to sketch you. So do pretty girl privileges this? Absolutely. That's my All right. I digress. So <laughs> on, on that note, do women recognize that privilege that pretty girl privilege exists? Yeah, because they get pissed at that shit. Oh, but OK. So on on that note, knowing that pretty women privilege exists. Uh huh. And knowing that the competition is stiff, right? Because yeah. what because what I do agree with what Kevin said is one, I do think that privilege, uh, pretty girl privilege exists. Uh-huh. I agree, and I also agree because we talked about this earlier in the podcast that men know exactly where we stand. Absolutely. All right. Is it that women do not know where they stand when it comes to the hierarchy of beautiful women? Um. And hate, hate, hate to ask this question for women. Women should be answering this. But yeah. feel free to answer in the comments. Please section. let us know. Um, <laughs> but do women know. understand where they act, are in hierarchy? We should ask women that. Um, and I do think, you know what I notice about women? When they don't agree with the hierarchy, they try to digress and go in different modes. Like, oh, well, I'm smarter. Where I got this job. Or they but Kevin, Kevin up, said that, though, right? He said, yeah, you need to be, be more feminine. You need to yeah. overperform. Yeah. And so 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 if you understand where you are in the hierarchy, right? Well, first question, women, do y'all understand where y'all are in the hierarchy? Because if that answer is no, then there's no follow-up question. But if women do understand where they are in the hierarchy, do you understand that you're going to have to overperform? Mm. Because as a man that is as a short man, yeah. <laughs> I understand that in many places in my life, when it comes to women, I have to overperform. I have to make more money. I have to smell better. Absolutely. I have to be funnier. I yeah. have to be a better late. Like, like there's so <laughs> many places where I gotta be better <laughs> than the six foot two guy. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I, I gotta, I like, I have to lap this dude, man. I, we we can't cross the finish line at almost the same time. Yeah, it's not gonna work. It ain't gonna work because she's gonna be like, well, that was close. Yeah, right? it has to be no competition Absolutely. between me and this other guy. Absolutely. Do women do women understand that? And is that becoming part of the problem of dating? Because we already know there's only 15% of black men that are, you know, what even Kevin Samuels talked about, right? Like the, the high value men. So forget six figures, but like 70 plus. Yeah. I mean, it's only 15% of the population. Half of those men do or do not have kids. We know that that doesn't bother women as much as it bothers bothers men. Mm-hmm. But every, so either 100% of women are going after 15% of the men or 100% of the women are going after 7.5% of the men. Which is funny, man. Um, <laughs> I just laugh at pretty girl privilege just because I deal with it so often. And it don't bother me. Of course it don't bother me. I'm married. But let me tell you something. For me, and it benefits me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when in it your ha- line of work, for sure. In my line of work, it benefits me greatly. But even those girls, they, the, you know what's funny? The pretty girls do understand. Like, they, com- they compete with other pretty girls. They, they understand. <laughs> Right, hey, they understand, but do women as a whole understand? And please don't post it just misogynistic. Like, don't. Well, I was about to say something. Yeah, don't, don't post that. No, no, do not come in the comments. Section. Bad bitches know other bad bitches too. I'm gonna say that too, man. Let me tell y'all something. When that's, these girls come to photo shoots, that, that, they be listing off. They always ask me what I know about the other baddies that come for photo shoots, yeah. and I'm like, I know nothing. I never yeah. know nothing. But I'm like. Yeah, y'all talk to the same nigga. And, 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 yeah, of course they do. And because it's seven and a half percent of the men, period, right? And it's only but so many it's hornets players. It's only but so many yeah, men that can afford, <laughs> you know, all the baddies, right? Uh, and then, you know, and it goes back into, you know, the second thing, right? All right mm-hmm. this, this ideal of the the, 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 the quote unquote bad bitch, right? Yeah. Like, my friends, they, they hate when I say this, and I say this <laughs> all the time. You know, there's no bad bitches over 30. Right? <laughs> They get mad when I say this. It just there, there is because at some point you have to become a lady. At it's the same way, you know, if you if you a hot boy, right? Like it's dudes, you a hustler, right? Yeah. You look stupid at thirty eight, still trying to be out here like when you was twenty eight. Yeah, that's true. So so again, it goes back to all right. Was Kevin right or was Kevin wrong? I think he's absolutely right. Do you understand where you need to overperform? Mm. Because when, if you are a beautiful woman and a man dates nothing but beautiful women, yeah, you're gonna have to perform in another arena, right? Like you're gonna have to be super fucking feminine. You're gonna have to be super fucking nice, yeah, right. Whatever it is that this man likes, you're gonna have to be a lot of that. My question for the ladies is, what age do y'all start realizing that y'all dating pool is shrinking? 
<laughs> That's what I want to know. Yeah, we're we gonna have to end on that note because we're gonna get canceled. Look, <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> we're gonna, we gonna get canceled. <laughs> hey, good question though. Snip that shit and post it. <laughs> good fucking question. What age do women start noticing that it's shrinking? Um, you got the simp post of the week. Simp post of the week. Oh, here's my All favorite right. segment of the show. Here we go. <laughs> How we end every show. All right, you can't change a man, but you can change men. Read it again. You deserve more than you settle for. This is from Ibrahim Asim, who used to be a coach. Now he's a, you know, I don't even know. His IG is at, at Feud for the Body. I'm probably going to grab a lot of simp posts off of his page. Now that I see that he's, <laughs> he's up and going he's on simp. Instagram. <laughs> All right, but let's read it again. You can't change a man, but you can change men. Read it again. Is this a simp post? All right. The reason why I'm going to say this is a simp post okay. is, is because, again, it's, it's telling someone that it's not your fault. <laughs> You're lacking accountability, right? Absolutely. You chose, you, uh, unless, excuse me. Evidently, me and a Fred Flintstone, they just hit women over the head. You're my girl now. Yeah. And then when you wake up and realize that he isn't the man you want, yeah. it's not your fault. Because <laughs> obviously that's how people date, right? People don't have the opportunity to actually go out on dates, interview, talk to, understand, and then say, would you like to be in a relationship? Yes, I would. Mm. No, I would not. So evidently, since that's not the case, since men are just knocking women over the head, yes, women, according to to Abraham, <laughs> is if you if you don't like your man, it's not your fault; it's his fault. And that's a fucking simp post. He do he does it for likes. He does it for capes, and that's always going to be a simp post. Now, if you're with somebody that's incompatible, absolutely, walk away if you want to. But here's the thing: if you quit. Don't blame the person that you quit on. Mm. Don't. Mm. If somebody leaves you, then you can say, all right, you know what? They left me, right? Yeah. But if, but if you quit, don't blame the person that you quit on. There's nothing wrong. I was watching I was watching a YouTube. I can't even remember the guy's mm -hmm. name. But he, he said something that made a lot of sense. He, he said that in relationships, you change. Mm -hmm. Because you, you start growing and developing into who you are. Yeah. And he, he was saying that a lot of times in relationships, when you do change, that the person that you used to be, you no longer are, your significant other may not like this new person. Mm. And he said, what you have to do is reintroduce them to this person. Mm. And you have, and so the reintroduction comes from dating, right? You have to say, hey, I've turned into this new person. I'm a different person. Yeah. Would you like to meet them? Yeah. All right. And when, and when your significant other gives you permission that, yes, I would like to meet that person, he said, you have to date them with the person that you are now and vice versa. When they change, you got to decide if you want to date that new person. Yeah. So this idea that it's never your fault. Yeah. This shit is always your fault. You're a fucking adult. It's always it's your fault. fault. It's always your fault. <laughs> it's never, it's never a hundred percent somebody else's fault. The person that you're dating is not God. They're not your Lord. You're playing a role in this, man. So I hate when dudes be like, ladies, this ain't on y'all. No, nah, a lot of shit be on y'all. Yeah. A lot of shit be on y'all. And a lot of shit be on men. Yeah. But, well, but we always, but I know in our circle, we check men, right? Absolutely. We were talking about a friend that had fucked up. And yeah. all his boys was like, bro. Yo, pull the shit together. Yeah, pull it together, man. You Absolutely. about to lose a good one, bro. Yeah. <laughs> pull <laughs> it together. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it um, up, man. It's funny, man. I was talking, uh, I was arguing in a Facebook group for the last three days about uh and we didn't touch on this it's not that important but uh what carlton Banks saying that he doesn't get supported by black men and the reason was because he has a white wife and i wrote in that facebook group i said yeah i believe bruh when he says he doesn't feel like he's supported in different ways and i i watch black women and men i watch well i watch the black community in this group uh call him gay say they didn't care they never knew he was married and I was like, oh, this is amazing because two episodes ago we talked about how when uh, women have issues with me and they first go for, oh, I thought, you gay. Yeah, your sexuality. Your sexuality first, gets first challenged. First place to go. And uh, this black woman was going back and forth with me, contradicting herself, talking about, you know, he's just mad he's not successful. I'm like, bruh, successful. Where are you getting this from? Yeah. She was like, well, I thought he was gay. I said, why would you ever think that? But, uh, but let's say he is. Yeah, and I was like, why does Who that cares? matter? And I told her, I said, yo, I said, the problem is, Black women have an issue being held accountable for their preferences. They have when when black men pressure black women on, hey, what's your? I have my preferences, you have yours. It's an issue when black women say, hey, I want a dude that's this tall. 
Um, I want to do this skin tone. It's not an issue. You know it's, what I'm saying? We, it, it, it is not. We, we're like two totally different complexions. And yeah. there's a preference for your complexion. Absolutely. There's a preference for my complexion. And there's a, com- there's and there's a preference a, there's way a pre- darker. For way darker, right? And they won't talk to and, either and, one of us. At no <laughs> point, do do it, as men, do we look at a woman and be like, that's fucked up. You won't date me because I'm not dark Exactly. Skin, right? And I, and I was trying to explain that to her. And she kept going back and forth. And she said, why do you feel like you need to hold black women accountable? And I said, we don't have nothing to talk about. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> It's and not. It's not holding. We're not holding a whole gender, yeah, you know, accountable. But what we're saying is that if we are going to date, we yeah. there has to be places that we agree. How the hell are we going to date if we don't agree on anything? anything? And then I told her. I said, "Look, man. I said the issue is you keep talking about him and his lack of support for him being successful. I said, uh, the issue I have with you at this moment is that you read the headline and didn't listen to his quote." Yeah. I said, I said, bruh's quote was when he goes out, people see him and they judge him because he has a white wife. That's the support he was talking about. She ain't wrote me back yet because yeah. I said you you thought about other shit that he'd never even fucking and, said. And here's the thing about um, Alfonso is that that compounded his issue, mm-hmm. right? It, it wasn't his issue, like his character, right? And, yeah. and, and this happens when you're an actor. Sometimes yeah. you become typecast. Absolutely. So, so once you are that person, you that in real you, life. You you that in real life. Like you got to prove to us that that you are. It's like the comedian that went on Dave Chappelle's show. Um, mm-hmm. What was the, what was the um, the black comedian name? Who? It, uh, Charlie Murphy? Are you talking about uh the one the one that was the, like the, the short one? No, the black dude that that would be on the uh, the, the improv show. Wayne Brady. Okay, yeah, right, yeah. Right? absolutely. So we all thought Wayne Brady was one way because of, of what of what he showed us, right? Yeah. We didn't know, you know, Wayne Brady. But when he went on the Dave Chappelle show, he was like, oh, bruh, cool. And he was a brother. We were like, yo, bruh, cool, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's the same thing with Alfonso. Like, you yeah. never showed us, like, bruh, you cool. We, you never showed us that you don't shuck and jive. Yeah, you, you've never. <laughs> so, so and, and so again, and, and look, and look, look, look what we're doing as black men. We're we're taking what he's saying, uh-huh. and we're taking what 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 the community have said, and we're like we're putting accountability back on him. Yeah, because that's what we do as black men. Exactly, the accountability falls back on, bro. You've never showed us that you were mm-hmm. cool, Wayne Brady. Evidently, that bothered Wayne Brady to the point that he was like, "Dave, we got to do the skit on your show." And I got to go in there and say, "Nigga." A yeah, times. you know what I'm saying. And now we look at Wayne Brady, we like, all right, we get it. We you get, get you. you getting your money, right? Absolutely, Alfonso. We'll look at you and be like, bro. You get your money, right? Yeah. But you gotta first show us that you that you part of the culture. Absolutely. Yeah, but you know, I, but I don't think it's, it's your wife per se. Nah. You know, like I mean, that's black man. We really, we really don't care. We trying to wake up people to understand that, like, yo, this fifteen percent of black men is in high demand. Yeah. So we trying to we trying to get our sisters to understand this. Yeah. Like this Uh-oh. ain't a low demand. Segment of men over here. This is a high demand segment of men. Absolutely. We'll talk about that later in the season. We, Maybe we, that'll be our last show. Like before we go out for the season. Look, man. We just have like that that piss everybody off show. Yo, I want to thank y'all for listening. I want to thank y'all for checking in. Make sure you join us on YouTube. Go watch the last video. It's been up. We need numbers. We need likes. We need comments. Hey, subscribe on our YouTube, man. We're trying to get this thing up. Absolutely, man. And uh we're gonna holler at y'all next time. Holler at your boy. And